74 years ago today, Canadian soldiers stormed the beaches of Normandy and pushed back Nazi tyranny. But today it feels like they need to storm the aisles of Canadian Tire because the Liberals just won't procure them enough camping equipment to help them do their jobs effectively. 74 years ago today, saw the start of Operation Overlord, that's better known as D-Day. It was the largest combined land, sea, and airborne invasion in history. 150,000 Allied troops landed or parachuted into the invasion zone, with some 14,000 Canadians targeting their assault at Juneau Beach. The Canadian Navy contributed 110 warships and 10,000 sailors, and the Air Force contributed 15 fighter-bomber squadrons to the battle. Canada, along with our allies, went on to liberate a continent and push back tyranny. Today is a proud day for all of us, but it's also an embarrassing day in 2018 because we just found out that our military is sharing sleeping bags and backpacks because they don't have enough of them to go around. The Canadian Armed Forces is ordering its members to return their rucksacks and sleeping bag kits so that they can be redeployed to get the equipment into the hands of the people who need to use it right now. According to information obtained by CTV News, and I'll quote them here for you directly, a Canadian Forces General Order, or CAN4Gen, was sent to all Armed Forces members on May 28th, commanding them to return the gear so that the military can redistribute material where it is needed most. The order will stand until there is no longer a shortfall of equipment. The order encompasses two types of rucksacks, including one that was first issued in 1982, as well as a six-piece sleeping bag system. Even sleeping bag liners are being recalled. Look, I'm a fiscal conservative, and there are not a lot of things that I want or trust the government to spend my money on. But making sure that our soldiers have all the equipment they need to defend Canadian values both at home and abroad is one of those things that I don't have a single problem throwing a heck of a pile of money at. I think it is disgusting that our military is still using rucksacks first issued in 1982. Why the hell are our men and women in service using backpacks that are older than many of them are? 35 or 36 year old backpacks, people. Other documents from the CTV late last week also revealed that there is a two to three billion dollar spending shortfall in the Defense Department last year. So in fact, the Liberals have allocated all the money. They just aren't interested in making sure the job of getting our men and women in uniform, the tools they need, is ever getting done. So I thought I would take this opportunity on today, D-Day, to remind everybody of all the things the Liberals could find to spend your money on as they tell our soldiers to recycle their sleeping bags amongst themselves. Now this one should still be on the top of everybody's mind. Last month, the Liberals announced that they were going to buy a pipeline that was built you know, during the Korean War to the tune of 4.5 billion taxpayer dollars. The Liberals announced the purchase of the existing Trans Mountain Pipeline as a means to alleviate environmental opposition to the expansion project. The total price tag for the project now in the hands of the government could be upwards of 15 billion dollars. And back in 2015, the Liberals announced that they would be giving well over two and a half billion taxpayer dollars to the developing world to fight the deadly effects of, wait for it, climate change, over two and a half billion dollars. The Liberals also announced they would be handing over nearly two thirds of a billion dollars for reproductive health services in the developing world. Translation, abortion services in third world countries. And the money was given to Oxfam, a charity more recently known for sexually abusing and sexually exploiting vulnerable women. The federal government is also throwing money down the pit of illegal migration into Canada, handing out $50 million to Quebec, Ontario, and Manitoba to help pay for just some of the costs they have incurred as a result of the influx of asylum seekers illegally crossing the border into Canada since Justin Trudeau's famous Welcome to Canada tweet. And that's really just a drop in the bucket of the total cost of Justin Trudeau's virtue signaling on that issue. And I think the most egregious example of where the government 
is willing to spend its money while it slaps veterans' faces is the $10.5 million payout to convicted terrorist murderer Omar Khadr. No court ever ruled that Khadr would be entitled to $10.5 million. This is just what the Liberals decided to pay someone who fought against Canada and our allies with the Taliban and killed an army medic named Christopher Speer. But really, did we ever really expect this Liberal government to treat our veterans and active service members with respect or fairness? The last time the Liberals were in power, they sent our soldiers to war in the desert wearing green camouflage. They were wandering around Kandahar looking like a bunch of spruce trees. So yeah, of course, the Liberals don't care if our soldiers don't have enough sleeping bags. And would we have expected any better from a Prime Minister who said this to an injured Canadian veteran here? My question is, what veterans were you talking about? Was the ones that fought for the freedoms and values that you so proudly boast about, or was it the ones who fought against? Because honestly, Mr. Prime Minister, I was prepared to be injured in the line of duty when I, went to, when I joined the military. Nobody forced me to join the military. I was prepared to be killed in action. What I wasn't prepared for, Mr. Prime Minister, is Canada have, turning its back on me. So which veteran was it that you were talking about? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, passion and your strength and being here today to share this uh, justifiable frustration and anger with me and with all of us here. Uh, thank you for having the courage to stand here uh, and thank you for listening to my answer. On a couple of elements you brought up. First of all, uh, why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Not only is this liberal government completely unwilling to support our veterans despite Trudeau's promises to no longer fight them in court anymore over their pensions, but the Liberals refuse to give our soldiers the tools they need to do their jobs when we ask them to. The Liberals have a war on our warriors. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. I've got a brand new book out called The Case Against David Suzuki, The Unauthorized Biography. My book details the hypocrisy of a man who is treated like some sort of climate oracle by Canada's state broadcaster, the CBC. And I've made the book available for free. Go to suzukibook.com where you can download your free digital copy. And if you want to pitch in to cover the cost of producing the book, you can do that too at suzukibook.com.